Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we are kind of at the uh, end of the Obon season for around here, and I wanted to talk a little bit about Obon. Uh, you know, here in the States, every temple does it on a different weekend, different time of year. Uh, a lot of temples are in July, and uh, some are in August, like us. And uh, in Japan, I understand it's kind of different by region. So some areas do it more in July, uh, some areas do it more in August, some areas even in September. Uh, a lot has to do with the lunar calendar versus the solar calendar and how they kind of dealt with those issues. Uh, and so, but my understanding, my experience, is that the most common is middle of August. So August 13, 14, 15, and 16. Uh, and so I'm recording this kind of on the first day, and you'll maybe be watching it on the last day. Uh, but this is kind of what I feel is Obon season in Japan. Now there are a variety of different Obon traditions in Japan as well. Uh, one of the reasons I'm talking about it is because I think it's really important for us to realize that very often Jodo Shinshu interprets things differently than what we might consider mainstream or traditional. And Obon is one of those areas. Uh, and so I'm going to talk first about uh, what I consider kind of the more traditional, mainstream, general kind of Obon traditions, uh, and then talk more about Jodo Shinshu a little bit later. So, in Japan, if you've ever lived in Japan in the summertime, which is not a good time to go uh, because it's so hot and humid, but uh, if you've lived there, uh, then you experience one of the most important aspects of Obon, which is go home. And people go home to their hometowns. So actually, you know, I lived in Japan uh, when I was 11 to 17, but we didn't go back to my mother's hometown. We just stayed in Tokyo. And so during August, there was a period there when the place was deserted. <laughs> I just remember, you know, Tokyo is a bustling city. It was so quiet for these few days because people generally aren't from Tokyo. Uh, they're from other parts of Japan and have moved to Tokyo. So they would go back to their hometown, their jika, right, where their family was based. Now, the kind of interesting thing is that it's not only people that go home at Obon time. Uh, it's also understood that the spirits go home. Now, this is where things start to get where we don't hear about so much here. Uh, but there's this idea that at Obon time, the spirits come from wherever they are. And Japan has a lot of different traditions on this, too. And Jodo Shinshu doesn't talk about it so much. So you might be like, what are you talking about? But uh, there's an idea maybe that the spirits are in kind of the underworld and that they come back uh, at Obon time. And so people get their homes ready, clean up the house, set up an altar, um, set up a special room uh, for the ancestors for when they come back. So everyone has this kind of, it's interesting, it's a time of returning, right? The people go return to their hometown, um, but also the spirits return uh, to their ancestral home. Now, I was very fortunate, not in high school, but after high school. I'm not, I don't remember if it was during college or, or after. Uh, but I did get to go to uh, my mother's family's hometown in Iwate Prefecture, Iwate Ken. Uh, that's kind of on the northeastern side of Honshu, the main island. Uh, and so I was able to, a couple times I think, go back uh, to my mother's hometown right, and experience Obon there. So one of the things is that the room was set up for, with the altar and pictures of my grandparents up on the wall. And that's where I was sleeping. <laughs> that was my um, bedroom because, you know, it, I was a guest. Uh, and so fortunately, I was already a young adult by that point, so I wasn't scared. But I could see how it could be kind of scary, you know, being in this room with the pictures looking down of your grandparents, my kind of stern grandparents looking down. Uh, that was the impression I got from my cousin. Uh, it, it's funny, today, you know, it's, it's going to get hot. Uh, we're beginning a heat wave apparently on today, on Thursday, and I was outside standing out in the parking lot here at church. And I don't know if it was the heat, the humidity, some smell in the air, I'm not sure, but I really got this feeling of nostalgia. Right? This, this real um, interesting feeling. And I tried to get it, I tried to kind of analyze it and figure out what's going on, and it kind of went away. Um, but I had that kind of 
blast of nostalgia, natsukashi, right, in Japanese. Uh, and so it was, that was really interesting, right? And I already had been thinking about this obon thing. Uh, so for me, thinking about uh, obon is kind of nostalgic because I have had uh, these experiences in Japan, right, with obon. It's very different than here. Uh, now, there's another aspect of returning, uh, and that is when obon is over. So after that long three, four day period, whether it's weekend or during the week or whatever, um, everyone goes back. They have to go back to work, right? And so uh, I remember seeing on, on Japanese news, they always talk about the U-turn rush, U-turn rush, right? This, <laughs> right? Everyone has gone home and now they make a U-turn and come back. Right? Um, but there's also an idea that the spirits go back too. And uh, so you may be aware that um, there's this kind of image of lanterns, paper lanterns, right, with a candle inside lit, uh, lit on a little boat and set loose on a river right, so that the, the, uh, these lanterns go sailing off. And the idea is that those lanterns are leading um, the spirits back home. Right? Uh, and so really interesting, right, the, the spirits return and, and the people, right, we turn to our ancestral home, uh, but then return after that to your regular life. Uh, now this is where I want to point out Jodo Shinshu is very different understanding. We do still use the lanterns, right? and whether we, uh, the Hatsubon lanterns uh, that we have for our Hatsubon service, uh, or the lanterns that we hang around the Yagura where the, the dancing goes on and you know in the driveway That's kind of a maybe a newer tradition. We we hang them But now we've been hanging the, the name tags kind of in memory uh, of loved ones But we don't have the lanterns as a way to guide our loved ones back to the spirit world Right, um, we it's, it's kind of neat. That's something that Shinshu does. We take a lot of the Buddhist traditions uh, but reinterpret them I mean, this is to me kind of a really interesting point uh, of Jodo Shinshu. And sometimes you may hear me say things and you're like, really? That's not the Buddhism I learned in, in a book or you know, in a class. But that's because Jodo Shinshu is very much reinterpretations of uh, traditional Buddhism. And actually Buddhism is always interpretation, in my opinion. I think I've talked about that before. Let's put that aside. Um, let's think about this idea of the, the spirits of our loved ones. That's one major thing that we don't really think about so much as spirits. Uh, Buddhism has kind of interesting views on spirits, but uh, for the most part, uh, I think we don't think about our loved ones in that way. Uh, what we need to know, our loved ones are not living in some underworld or spirit world. My understanding is they've been born in the Pure Land, but as much as we think of the Pure Land as a paradise, Gokuraku, uh, the, you know, the, this uh, land of peace and bliss, at the same time, Shinran again reinterprets that the instant they're born in the Pure Land, they instantly become Buddha and then return here. So this is where that idea of returning is really interesting. Right? They don't stay in the Pure Land, they return uh, to be with us, right? to uh, help teach us, to help guide us, now this idea can be found uh, in Shoshinge, uh, which is uh, Shinran Shonin's poem that really encapsulates Jodo Shinshu. We chant it at uh, Honko and Gotane and other times. Uh, so let me read it. It's from the Vasubandhu section. Uh, uh, and it's, it's Vasubandhu talking uh, in, well, it's, it's, it's taken from Vasubandhu's uh, text, the treatise on the Pure Land, the Jododon. Here's what he says. This is Shinran encapsulating Vasubandhu. And when they reached that lotus-held world, the Pure Land, they immediately realized the body of suchness or Dharma nature. Then, sporting in the forest of blind passions, they manifest transcendent powers. Entering the garden of birth and death, they assume various forms to guide others. So the lotus-held world, the, the Pure Land, uh, the, they, they, they don't go there and, you know, dancing and hanging out like in a heaven, although there, there, sometimes that imagery comes up. Uh, he says they realize the body of suchness. Suchness is true Buddha reality. It's, it's emptiness. Uh, it's, it's oneness. Right? And so they re have received this body of suchness or Dharma nature, the true nature of things, empty, uh, interconnected. Right? Uh, then sporting in the force of blind passion. 
So the forest of blind passions or, or um, bonno, that's here. That's where we are, right? And this imagery of being a forest, but they're sporting, they're playing, they're dancing, right? They're, they're not stuck in the three, um, the, the three poisons or the 108 passions, right? That they're manifesting transcendent powers. They're free, they're able to kind of play. Entering the garden of birth and death, that's here, samsara. Birth, death, birth, death, birth, death, right? Uh, they assume various forms to guide others. Uh, so this is these, our loved ones are like this, right? That they're, they're okay, they've been born in the Pure Land, and yet not simply sitting there, but actively thinking about us, sporting uh, and uh, manifesting pow transcendent powers. Uh, assuming various forms to guide others, right? So that they're part of wisdom and compassion that's always working on us. Now, Shin, Shinran's Kyogyo Shinsho, that, which is where Shoshinge is found, the whole structure of it is going to the Pure Land, the Oso, the going aspect, and returning from the Pure Land, Genso, the returning aspect. So when I started studying as a student, uh, not when I started, as I learned, uh, I began to think, okay, that's, this is the Pure Land path. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. I want to go to the Pure Land so I can uh, attain Buddhahood and then return here. But another way to think about it is uh, that's what our loved ones have already done, right? That they've already gone to the Pure Land uh, and they have returned, right? That they're here uh, with us, right? Think, like I've been saying, thinking about us. Uh, this is kind of context of the bodhisattva path, right? That you want to uh, become a bodhisattva, like a Buddha in training, so that eventually you can become a Buddha and be able to help others uh, without the limitations uh, that we normally have. Um, always being, you know, having the three poisons always active in us. So our loved ones have already done that. Right? And so the important thing is we don't have to wait for Obom. This returning aspect isn't only for the three or four days of Obon or the weekend that we have uh, for festival and, and, and service and everything. Uh, instead, uh, it, it's all the time. So we don't have to wait for Obon. But I was thinking, you know, Obon is a special occasion. Uh, it's a special season, right? This summertime. Uh, this year is very weird because you can't go to, you can't go to other temples to go see their festival and their Bon dance. You can't even come to your own temple. Right? We had to do it online and everything. That was fun though, right? And I was thinking, you know, to be able to live here and live at your home temple and be able to have Obom uh, every year is, is, is not something to take for granted, but we do. Uh, and so maybe uh, this, this year of, of not being able to do Obom the way we normally do uh, can remind us how special it is. Right? Remind us uh, that uh, this is a really uh, special thing not something to be taken for granted. And then remind us, oh yeah, and that I don't have to wait for this time to think of my loved ones, thinking about them all the time, because they're thinking about us all the time. So sometimes this difficulty that we go through, right, uh, whether it's uh, in a pandemic, not being able to uh, go to temple, go to festival, right, not being able to just go do what you want, not being able to have the freedom, just hop in your car, go pick something up, you have to think about it, right? You have to, you have to, uh, as, as great as it is to not have to think and just do whatever you want, uh, this maybe is a good reminder for us uh, that being able to do what I want is something really special, right? Being able to freely go wherever I want to go uh, is uh, it's, it's not a normal thing, it's a special thing, right? Some of us, uh, even during normal times, aren't able to do that whether it's because you don't have the time or the money or you don't even have the mobility to be able to do it and so I think that all the difficulties that we go through in life, uh, we need to acknowledge them as difficult. It's okay. But also, uh, they can also be this kind of teaching for us, right? To rather than just be like, I don't like this, this is bad. Well, what is it showing me? Oh, it's showing me how, how actually, how much I have in my life, right? It's showing me, wow, how much, um, how special my life is. Maybe that's part of this assuming various forms to guide others. Right? That sometimes the Buddha Dharma uh, is teaching us uh, and we don't realize it. So every moment uh, is a chance uh, to reflect. Every moment is a chance to uh, think about how lucky I actually am. 
right? Uh, every moment is a chance to think about, oh, I don't want to take this for granted. Don't want to take this opportunity for granted. What am I taking for granted? What am I missing out on? Uh, the, the chance to help others, right? Who needs help? What can I do? Okay. Uh, these questions uh, can be brought up at this Obon time. Uh, they can be brought up at any time. I also want to really thank you uh, for continuing to watch uh, these videos. And uh, we're going to try something different in a few weeks. Uh, we'll send out an email uh, to do a, try to do a live Zoom service. And so I'm starting to think about how to do that, what it's going to entail. Uh, we'll be sending out an email probably. And uh, so, you know, uh, I th some of you have signed up uh, for email uh, that we haven't been, uh, if you haven't been on the list before, uh, if you're not a member. You can also think about becoming a member too. Uh, we're going to send an email out to the friends list soon uh, about uh, if you want to actually become a member of Buddhist Church of Oakland. Uh, but you can just be on the friends list too, and we'll, we'll be sending out that notification. Okay? Uh, so I want to really thank you. Uh, you can always check the website, BuddhistChurchOfOakland.org. It'll be at the bottom uh, of down there, <laughs> the bottom of the, um, the in the description under the video. And I uh, hope you're having a good summer. And uh, here at this kind of the, the tail end of the Obon season, uh, let's think about our loved ones. Uh, let's reflect on our lives uh, as we say the Nembutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namanda.